Welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to take a look at the absorption spectrum. Now, it turns out the sun does not quite act like an incandescent light bulb. An incandescent light bulb gives us a nice, beautiful, unbroken rainbow of colors. We would call that a continuous spectrum, but the sun doesn't do that. The sun gives us what we call an absorption spectrum, and let me explain to you what that is. Well, the continuous spectrum is exactly what the word says. It's continuous, unbroken, all the colors. And I don't have the yellow color there, so imagine this to be yellow. Um, don't have a yellow pen. Um, but this is what we see when we look at an incandescent light bulb through a diffraction grating or through a prism. A prism or a diffraction grating separates the colors, it bends the colors in such a way that we can see all the colors of visible light broken out into the individual colors like this. Now if we look at a gas cloud or a uh, in the laboratory perhaps a tube with a particular kind of gas in it and we agitate the electrons in the gas by putting a strong stream of electrons through it or something like that then what happens is the electrons jump to higher orbits when they start cascading back down when they jump at particular levels from one level to another they give off photons of a very specific color so in the case of hydrogen we have the H alpha the H beta the H uh, gamma ray and the H delta ray there the three the four different colors that are the most prominent colors of hydrogen and that's what we would call an emission spectrum it only emits very specific wavelengths now, what does the sun's spectrum look like? Well, it's called an absorption spectrum because for some reason, the lines that are very visible when we look at a gas tube full of hydrogen and we agitate the, uh, the uh, electrons in the hydrogen, then we see these very specific colors. On the sun, those colors are missing. Only those colors. For example, um, I have a black pen here. We would see a dark line right at the very spot where we normally would see a bright red line from hydrogen. And over here, where we see a turquoise greenish color, we see again a dark line. Over here, the two purple colors, again we see a dark line and dark line. Those colors were simply absorbed, but not only for hydrogen, also for helium. So you have a red line there, so that one is missing. And here we see the orange line, that one would be missing. Those two green lines, those two would be missing. And then we see the two blue lines, those would be missing. And then, for example, for sodium, those very two bright lines side by side in sodium that are orange, they would be missing on the sun as well, and so forth. Every element that has a specific set of colors, and of course those aren't the only color for sodium, but the two prominent lines on sodium, every color would be missing on the sun's spectrum. Those colors were simply absorbed, and that's what we call an absorption spectrum. The question now would be, why does that happen? Well, it turns out that the energy that's generated in the sun is usually generated in the core, and it takes hundreds of thousands of years for the energy slowly to work its way out towards the outside and escape the sun's surface. Well, towards the surface of the sun, the very top regions of the sun, and then also right up here in the, in the layers outside the sun, the so-called the atmosphere of the sun, when the rays go through them, it turns out that the electrons, at that point when the temperature is low enough, the electrons can actually come in and start occupying the lower orbits of the atoms, and then when the radiation from the inside of the sun passes through those cool, relatively cooler layers, it causes electrons to jump up and absorb the energy of those particular frequencies, and therefore they're missing. Now, of course, they'll jump back down, they will re-radiate out, but when they re-radiate out, they radiate out in all different directions, and because of that, only a very small percentage of it will be directed directly towards the Earth. And because of that, those lines would be so, well, less intense, I would say, so, so rarefied that you simply can't see them, and so they end up being missing. What that is a great indication for us for is that those missing lines actually indicate that those elements are present. Now what we have to do is kind of play a puzzle because notice there'll be hundreds and hundreds in the sun, there's well over 800 of those missing lines and we have to pair them up to the lines that normally uh, would belong to some, uh, some of the other elements that are in the sun. And so by finding the missing lines and by pairing them up to specific lines that we know are spectra of the elements that we know of, we can then go back and actually realize what elements are present in the sun. In this respect, we found more than 60 elements on the sun by finding the missing lines of the elements that actually are present, but the lines are missing because the lines have been absorbed in the sun's absorption spectrum. So that's why we call this, and might as well write it down, this is called an absorption spectrum. 
And that is what we see not only from the sun, but from all the other stars in the universe, which is great for us now because now we want to know what the stars are made up of, what they contain. We simply have to look at their spectrum, look at the missing lines, find the corresponding elements that belong to those missing lines, and then we can say those elements are present in that star. It turns out that in this case with the sun, we actually found the element helium for the first time by looking at this spectrum, the absorption spectrum of the sun, and we saw some of these lines that we couldn't identify. We had no experiment that we had done on the Earth where we had recognized the actual emission spectrum because helium is a rather difficult gas to sequester. It's a noble gas. It doesn't react with anything. We didn't even know it existed, and therefore we didn't have the spectrum, but we saw the missing line that we couldn't pair up with any other element in the periodic table that we had known at the time. And so therefore we said, well, here's a new element that exists. Let's call it helium after the sun's name Helios. And that is how we actually discovered the presence of helium in the sun. Now helium, of course, being the second most abundant element in the sun, the lines were quite prominent, so we couldn't miss them. They were there, we just couldn't recognize what they were for. And we do the same thing for all the other stars that we want to um, investigate. We look at their spectrum, we look at the missing lines, and from that we can, we can detail out what kind of elements are in those stars. Of course, it's not quite as simple. The temperature of the stars has an effect of which ones are more visible and less visible. The rotation of the stars, a lot of other things that, that actually make it a difficult task to do that. It's, so I don't want to give you indications really simple, but the science is there. The ability for us to do it is there. And so the absorption spectrum is kind of a, uh, what we call an encyclopedia into the understanding of what the elements are in that particular star we're looking at. And so with the sun, we found well over 60 elements clearly identified through the absorption spectrum. Of course, if you really want to see what an absorption spectrum looks like, there's hundreds and hundreds of these dark lines from, ele from the elements that have absorbed those specific frequencies and so kind of give us the telltale sign that they're present.